Well, welcome to Old Classic Car, and in this collection we're looking at classic hatchbacks and cars with lift-up tailgates. And to begin with, we have this oh-so-orange, very 1970s Saab 99L Combi Coupe. You can see the rear tailgate there, uh, shared with the 900 of 1979 onwards. This is a P-Reg car, so about 1975 or thereabouts. Now, down to the reserve collection at the uh, British Motor Museum down at Gaydon, and they've got this LUL 79P. This is a prototype car, the Triumph SD2 of 1975. It never went into production, but presumably it was going to be a replacement for the Dolomite. And here, an Austin Metro, a G-Reg Austin Metro City 1 litre. This is a five-door hatchback. Um, initially, the Metros were only available as a three-door, as I remember, and then the five-door came along a little while later. And this has a tailgate, a side hinged tailgate in the case of the E-Type. E this was at Cape Thorn Hall, it's a Series 1 4.2 Jaguar E-Type, but it has a tailgate, so it qualifies for this collection of photographs. Now, two for the price of one here, we've got a Ford Sierra XR4i from 1983 in the foreground, and next to that a GT6. There's another GT6 just visible in the background as well, and a Ford Focus. Now to the classic car show at the NEC, this is the Matra Bagheera X. These have a lift up tailgate, I believe the Bagheera that came before didn't, but the X, uh, that was one of the things that was introduced on this particular model. And still at the NEC we got this fantastic Triumph Herald, 1965 Herald. This was another styling proposal, a prototype that never went into production, a fastback car with a hatchback at the rear. Now, not an Opel Monza, this is the Vauxhall Royale equivalent, the Royale Coupe, an automatic car, this one from 1979. Back to Triumph GT6s and the rear three quarter view of a Mark III GT6. Extra handle there on the rear tailgate on this particular car, and an extra brake light as well, twin pipe exhaust system, but lovely little cars. One from Fiat now, and we have the Fiat 127 Sport. So this was a facelifted version, probably late 1970s or thereabouts. A friend of mine's mum had a new Fiat 127 in the 1970s, but it was a slightly earlier shape than this one. Another fascinating vehicle, and we have the Citroen SM. Maserati powered, of course. Quite an exotic car for the day, and uh, probably not the easiest car to keep running nowadays. And quite a few Ford hatchbacks in the background as well. I've got three hatchbacks here, just peeking into view at the back there is a Maestro. In the foreground is a Nissan Bluebird five-door hatch and a Golf Mark II alongside that. This is the Lancia HPE, sort of a coupe stroke estate stroke, I'm not quite sure what, but it's got a hatchback, so it qualifies again for this particular video. You could get the Volumex version as well, which had the supercharger. Somewhat more mainstream here, we have a Mark III Ford Escort in five-door hatchback form. This particular car is X-Reg, so late 81 or early 1982. There's a hatchback E-Type alongside. And the Datsun, this is a 260Z. I had to check this one out. Uh, the 240Z is very similar, but the 240 has the uh, reverse lights incorporated in the main rear light cluster. The 260Z has it separate as on this car. Now back to the NEC, and we've got a five-door hatch version of the Vauxhall Astra. I was never much a fan of these when they were new, and have not really grown on me anymore in the intervening years, but quite a rare survivor now. Quite a sharp-looking Skoda here. This is an M-Reg car, so what's this, about 1994 or thereabouts? The five-door Skoda Favorite. Carrying on with these classic hatchbacks, we had to have one somewhere. Here we've got a chrome bumper MGB GT, complete with its tailgate raised. Another classic now, late 1970s, about 1977, or thereabouts, a Vauxhall Chevette three door hatch. Fiesta, this time in Mark I form. It's an extra edge on to quite a late one, 1981 or early 1982. Surrounded by three box saloons. I've already done a video about three box saloon cars. If you haven't seen it already, please check that out when you're finished here. Now, this is a rarity the Maestro, the MG Maestro Turbo 
MG Maestros are pretty rare on the ground and uh, the turbo version is very rare. I don't think they made many even back in the day they were quite a rare sight so today it's very unusual. As are these, this is the Fiat Uno Turbo IE. This particular car g reg so that puts it at late 89 or early 1990. If you can add any more information on the cars that feature in this video please pop a note in the comments and that's followed by an A-Reg Talbot Horizon. Uh, you could always hear these coming, I think they shared their engine, which was a fairly vocal unit with the Chrysler Alpine. This is quite a rare survivor in brown, Cape Stall Hall. That's the NEC in the rear three-quarter view of a very rare Honda S600. Obviously you can see the hatchback design of this particular coupe, I like the filler neck on the rear quarter there. Another oddball prototype one-off, XW0300J, this is the Leyland Crompton Electricar prototype. Interesting little car, that one dates to um, late 1970. Can't help thinking that'll probably sell quite well today. Somewhat more recent is this K-Reg 1992 Peugeot 309, a three-door hatchback. This is a Zest limited edition. You can just see that on the front door there. Many, many limited edition versions of Peugeots were quite common. Now a rear three-quarter view of the little Polo Coupe. This is an L-Reg car, 1993. Probably non-original wheels, but otherwise a fairly standard looking car. The Rover SD1, the big hatchback of the 1970s and the 1980s. I suspect most survivors are probably the three and a half litre V8 cars now, but they were available back in the day with various engines, including a diesel, if I remember right. Back to the NEC, and here we have the Renault 19. I was never much a fan of these either, a bit like the Astra. These were built from 1988 to 1996. Quite a rare sight now, this is a French registered car. Now a rear three-quarter view of a Ford Escort RS Turbo. I think this is a Series 2 car. This has been based on the Mark IV Ford Escort, and there's a Focus alongside that. Next up we have an M-registered uh, Fiat Panda, a three-door hatchback, and we'll be seeing the Seat version of this a little later in the same video. And carrying on with all these classic hatchbacks, we have the wonderful Porsche 928. This is quite a late example. I do like these. These were Car of the Year back in 1978. This is a fairly late one, probably an S4. Um, quite a handsome machine, 5-litre V8 engine at least initially. Now a Triumph GT6 E-Reg, this will be a Mark 1 with a low front bumper but it has got all the bonnet scoops and vents of the Mark 2. Non-original Minilite style wheels as well, great little car they are. This is the Renault Avantime, quite an unusual car, probably the newest car to feature in this set of photos but 2002 so it is 20 years old now and what a car that is, they'll never make a car like that again. Many people say this was the first hatchback, but technically the A40 Countryman, as shown here in Mark II form, it had a split tailgate, so technically it wasn't a hatchback, but in Italy the Innocenti version did have a one-piece hatchback. Seat here, another Marbella, uh, this one from 1985. Vauxhall Astra, we've had one already, the Mark II, and this is the Mark I. This is a five-door hatchback version of the Mark I from 1983. That's a Peugeot, the P-Reg car, so 1996. This is a three-door Peugeot 306. Sort of a retro car, future classic if you like, but they're not going to make any more, and they're only going to get rarer. Same with these, this is a five-door Ford Sierra, but not any old Sierra, this is an Azura limited edition. I'm not sure if I've ever seen one of these before. The Talbot Sunbeam Lotus is next, this is a works car by the look of it, Jean Tot and Guy Frecolier. Names on the front wing there, fantastic rally car of the day, rear wheel drive of course, and the hatchback raised as you can see in this photo. Somewhat less sporting is this T-registered 1999 uh, Reliance three-wheeler. Slice of Japan now, G-Reg, that's 1989 Honda Civic three-door hatch. Got a racy looking Renault alongside it. 
real oddball now. Interesting registration. This is the AR6 prototype. This is an Austin Rover styling proposal. Uh, note the curved rear screen and the wide rear doors. Bit of an experimental car, but obviously never went into production. And here's another one in the same collection, ECV3. This is a concept car from 1982, had a three-cylinder engine. The ECV was energy conservation vehicle. So even then they were thinking about saving resources, economy, and so on. Not so much a priority with this fantastic car. This is a Porsche 924 Carrera GTS. You don't see too many of these now either. This is the Citroen XM. Going off that registration number, it's a V6 car, and you can just see the engine there, bonnet raised. Very popular classic hatchback nowadays is the Peugeot 205, especially in GTI form like this particular car. The early ones were 1.6 litres and later they were 1.9. People seem to have their favourites, some prefer the early cars and some the late. The classic hatch here of the 1980s, a Golf Mark II. This is a driver version, a five-door hatchback. A very original, very standard and very smart looking example it is too. Renault 5 Turbo 2. This was quite a machine designed very much with rallying in mind back in the early 1980s. The Rover 820, I think this was a base model, this popped up at a classic car meet uh, a few months ago. Very rare survivor now, G-Ridge car, that'll make it, what, 1989 or 1990 in date. Another Escort, this time a Mark IV, very similar to Mark III but slightly different trim and front end. Again, it's a five-door hatchback version. of Saab. This is the Type 4. This is a Saab 9000. There was also the Fiat Chroma, the Lancia and the, uh, the, the Alfa Romeo 164. They all shared the same basic structure and this was Saab's version of it. The Rep's favourite of the early 1980s. Here we've got a Ford Sierra 1.6L circa 1983. A three-door hatch version. Next up, the Honda Z600, quite a rare, very small car of the early 1970s. Somewhat different in just about every way is this glorious Jensen Interceptor. I think this was a Mark III bonnet raised, showing off its Chrysler V8 engine there. Huge glass rear hatch on these particular cars as is the case with this. This is the Glassback, a triple X stroke BL design exercise of the late 1970s. And here is the Nissan Cherry. I think this is the Nissan Cherry Europe, which was a sort of a, a collaboration between Nissan and Alfa Romeo. So you got Alfa Romeo engine and Nissan styling. Mm -hmm. Back to the NEC and one of the Vauxhall Club stands and we've got a Vauxhall Cavalier SRI, a five-door hatchback version. I don't think the wheels are original, I seem to remember them fitted with something different, but rare survivor again. Fiat Uno Turbo again, this one was at the Capestone Hall Classic Car Show in 2022 in May. Quite a rare car and four of them turned up incredibly. Staying with exciting hatchbacks, we've got the Ford Escort Cosworth, the RS Cosworth. This is a K-Reg car, 1992, probably non-original front lamps perhaps, otherwise great car. And here, back to Gaydon in the British Motor Museum, we've got BMC 9X. This was a prototype um, in 1969, a proposal for a mini replacement, which never actually came to anything, but you can see the mini wheels. There's no prizes for guessing what's under the skin. Here, an H-Reg Vauxhall Nova three-door hatch. There's a Fiesta alongside it. And the mighty Renault 25. Don't see too many of those around nowadays. This is an H-Reg car dating it to 1990 or early 1991. You can just about see a Renault 5 in the background as well. Another classic French hatchback as is this, not just any Renault Clio, this is a Renault Clio Williams II, one of the 
Williams prepared cars, tuned up, tweaked, modified suspension and so on. To the Crew Heritage Centre, where there used to be a good classic car meet on a regular basis, we've got an Enreg Ford Fiesta here, this is a Mark III. Bit of an oddball here, but it's got a rear hatch. This is the Lancia Fulvia Zagato Sport. The Zagato bodied version of the Fulvia. I'm not entirely sure if I prefer it or not. I think I probably prefer the standard car, but a standard car just has a conventional boot lid. Uh, now here's a one-off that someone's made based on the Jaguar XJS. If I remember correctly, that hatchback was based on a Citroen item that's been made to fit. Quite a neat job. Next up, the Fiat Strada, a D-Reg car, this is from 1986, I think this is a 130TC or the 105TC, the hot hatch version of the Strada, built to go up against the likes of the Golf GTI and the Peugeot 205 GTI. In here, 1985 is the date, and the Renault Fuego Turbo, complete with lift-up rear hatch. Still plenty more hatchbacks to go, and here we've got an R-Reg, uh, Austin Maestro, not an MG, not an MG Turbo, just a normal uh, Maestro, that's the kind of thing you'd see parked up in any street back in the day. Another Fiesta, this time it's a Mark II, so that'll be what, late 1980s or thereabouts, I can't see the registration plate on this one, but yeah, late 1980s, somewhere around there. Could be the Popular Plus. Really unusual car now, this was a one-off, this was a Rover Alvis collaboration, a prototype of, based on the P6, the 2000S, bodied by Radford. This is on display down at the British Motor Museum, along with many, many other interesting cars. And here, the Sirocco, this is a Mark 1 VW Sirocco, the GLI, this one from 1979. It's rear hatchback clearly evident there, as is the case with the Mark 2 Sirocco alongside it. Now we've seen the Talbot Horizon already and this is the Chrysler Alpine and I have a feeling they had a very similar engine, both were fairly vocal, you could hear them coming a mile away and you knew exactly what would be coming round the corner as it approached. And the Ford Escort, this time an XR3i, the boy racer car of the 1980s, this is based on the Mark IV Ford Escort. Lancia Delta Integrale, a five-door hatchback version. These were built very much with rallying in mind. The Saab 900 Turbo here. We've had the 99 right at the beginning, the bright orange 99 Combi Coupe, and the rear body is shared with this, a 16-valve version of the 900 Turbo. There's a bit of an oddball scene in the auction area at the 2022 Practical Classics Restoration Show on Embridge uh, Nissan Pulsar GTI R, all the way from 1994. A couple of classic hatchbacks here in the foreground a Nova GTE and its arch rival of the day alongside a Mark II Ford Fiesta XR2. Here is a Sunbeam Harrington. This is a, basically a Sunbeam Alpine and the fastback uh, Harrington roof applied to it. You can see the rear hatch there, the lift up rear hatch and window. Back to the Crew Heritage meet of several months ago, MUL 647L. That's a 1972 73 Austin Maxi. Now this was built to commemorate the DTM, the German touring car uh, prepared version, the Vauxhall Calibra DTM. You can just see a little sticker on the front door there. This DTM was a limited edition version of the Vauxhall Calibra. And here a Mark II Ford Capri. The Mark I Capri of course had very similar lines but only had an opening boot lid. It was the Mark II Capri that saw the hatchback introduced. The Porsche, this time a 924. We've had the GTS Carrera before, and this is the standard version of the Porsche 924. There's a Maxi in the background and a Marina Coupe, no less. Another Triumph GT6, we had the Mark 1, and this is the Mark 2 GT6 with a raised front bumper, 2 litre straight six engine under that power bulge on the bonnet, 
and the vents on the side wings. The only GT6 to have those louvers on the front wings. Quite a modern car, retro car now, a Vauxhall P Reg Astra GSI. Future classic, probably quite a rare, rare car now. Somewhat older in design, but quite a late example from the 1980s, the Renault 4. I do like those. Again, this was at the Crew Heritage meet a little while ago. It's a five-door Escort hatch alongside that. Back to the NEC, another classic Peugeot. This is a 106 Rally, a sporty version of the little 106 hatchback. Carrying on with these classic hatchbacks, still a few to go. We've got an Audi here, so that's a W Reg car from 1980. It's an intriguing car, we've had the Matra Baguera, and this is the Matra Murina, and you can see the rear tailgate raised there. Actually any car with an opening hatchback or tailgate qualifies for this particular video, and it goes alongside the uh, three box saloon video that I did before. And here, another Ford Escort this time, a Mark V, just to complete the set. Five door hatchback, of course. Again, a crew heritage. Used to get quite a variety of cars there. This is our edge, so about 1997 or early 98. And a Gaiden is this experimental car, a safety test and development car, if you like, based on the MGB. Quite a rare vehicle. Well, it was a one off, so I thought I'd include it here. Quite an unusual looking 1100 alongside it as well. And a classic Japanese car here, again, 1997 or 98, R-Reg. This is a Honda Integra, if I remember correctly, a Type R, the sporty one. And here we go, an early Austin Metro. We had the latest one, the G-Reg car, quite early in this particular set of photographs. And here, the Mark I three-door Metro, circa 1981, early 82. This was a Gaiden, the Mini Meat. And the Renault 5, we've seen a few glimpses of Renault 5s previously, but here you go. Here's an f reg car from 1988, three-door hatch. Just a few more to go. An Alpha Sud, registered Sud 1P. Very good. This is a 1983 car. The first Alpha Suds just had the little opening boot lid, but I believe by this point in time they had a full hatch. The Fiat 127, we've had one of these before, the sporty one, and this is the standard 1050. It's on a Y, so that makes it 1982 or 1983. It's a 1050CL. And another converted XJS made into a hatchback. What a great looking car, and this one retains the overall shape of the XJS. And I think this works particularly well, it makes for a very, very practical car, I think. If you know any more about the history of that one, let me know. Now to the Tatton Park Classic Car Show in the mid-2000s and this Renault 17 TS. It's on an S registration, so that makes it August 1977 onwards in date. We've had the Mark II Golfs, now a Mark I three-door Golf GTI S reg, so that's 77 or 78. A three-door view now of a Rover 200, one of the Rover 200 series. The 400s were the booted cars, and the 200s, the R8 code, I think these were, and the 200s were the hatchbacks. This is a five-door hatch. WD52 GHY. This car dates to 2003. I've no idea how you pronounce it, but it's an IZH 2126. More than that, I do not know. And here is the Ford Probe, this one, circa 1995. And similar lines to the Opel Manta Coupe, this is the Vauxhall Cavalier Sports Hatch of the mid to late 1970s. A very clean example as well. These things rotted for England like most 1970s cars did, so uh, to see one in this condition is quite a rarity. And rounding out this collection of classic hatchbacks, we have a Mitsubishi Colt Celeste coupe with hatchback styling. Very smart it is too. We can just see a Jensen Interceptor in the background. And that completes this particular collection of photographs. Thanks very much for watching this. Uh, have a look at the rest of the channel if you've not seen the old Classic Car channel before. And there'll be more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now.